Thank you guys for coming, braving the uh, cold, wet rain of Los Angeles. Uh, but it's going to be a great day today. This is our uh, first Los Angeles County DHS Diabetes Day, and it's presented by the DHS uh, Endocrinology Specialty and Primary Care Work Group. I'm Dr. Theodore Friedman. I'm at MLK Mac, now called MLK Outpatient Center, and um, Charles Drew University. And um, the target audience for Diabetes Day is anyone in Los Angeles County, including DHS and community partners who takes care of patients with diabetes or wants to improve the care of patients with diabetes. I don't think you'll want to miss this event. And again, we have a great turnout today. Our goals are to improve care with, for patients with diabetes in Los Angeles County, to educate providers on treating patients with diabetes, improve the systems for taking care of patients with diabetes in LA County. And we hope today's attendees learn a lot. And we want you to bring back information to your own medical centers and clinics to share what you've learned, because not everybody could have made it today. So I'd like to give you a little bit of homework assignment. <laughs> if you could fill out this form as the day goes on, and think about three things that you've learned today you can bring back to medical, your medical center or your clinic. Uh, think about what you can do to help improve diabetes care based on your breakout sessions in the afternoon, and would like to continue to do some of these discussions with our endocrinology work group. Hand in the sheet, and as well as um, maybe make a copy for yourself or write it down in your uh, on, on some notes that you can learn in your interest about follow-up um, after the day's over because we, we want this to be a continuing process about how to improve diabetes care. It's not going to end today. Uh, we are very pleased to offer CME credits. Um, it's by a joint uh, partnership between Charles Drew University and Los Angeles County DHS and the CME group, uh, Jonathan Rodriguez over there, um, has done a great job with this. He's worked very hard. A lot of requirements for CME, and I think that's one of the reasons why we have a good attendance today is by offering CME. Jonathan will give a little instruction shortly. Nursing CEUs are provided by DHS Nursing, and we also offer MFT licensed social workers, certified alcohol and drug counselor social um, CEs provided by the UCLA Substance Abuse Program and Pacific Southwest Addiction Tra Technology Transfer Center. And all those CME CE things are out at the, um, at the desk there. Our, um, our credits and nursing CEU objectives include describe the magnitude of the diabetes epidemic in Los Angeles County DHS, elaborate on the key points of LA, Los Angeles County's DHS's diabetes protocols, give example of preventive measures for heart disease in patients with diabetes, and discuss the emotional side of diabetes and how it influences care for diabetes patients. We are fortunate to be funded by the UCLA CTSI Catalyst Award and the Kaiser Permanente Southern California Community Benefit, and this allowed us to put on today's event without any cost. Um, we, sold, we originally planned on 200 people. We sold out in three days. The California Endowment expanded the, our capacity here to allow 250 per, uh, participants, and we reached that number um, uh, quite well. We have about 50% DHS participants, about 35% community partners, and about 15% other people. We had uh, our last count 66 MDs, 71 NPs and PAs, 61 nurses, and one clinic director from Chicago. Denise, are you here? Yeah. Hi, Denise. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Sorry to embarrass you. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about the DHS Endocrinology Specialty Primary Care Work Group. We started meeting in May 2013 under the leadership of Paul Gibney. And um, we have uh, e-consults. We started them in August 2013. We have Endocrinology, Diabetes, Peds Endo, and Peds Diabetes e-consults. And we'll talk about that and some of the how to improve them in the breakout sessions this afternoon. Uh, well, we're generally working on improving diabetes and endocrinology care throughout Los Angeles County, including the DHS and our community partners. And we realize the enormous problem of diabetes in Los Angeles County and how there needs to be a partnership between endocrinologists, the patient-centered medical homes, and primary providers. And this led to our theme, Diabetes Across the Continuum, that Sue Green coined. Um, and we decided to bring on some additional diabetologists to our group. And we developed expected practices, which are posted on the county website. And we're working on a lot more of them. So um, our, our team includes uh, me as the chair. Paul is the um, director of specialty care. Sue is outside there. There she is. And um, Sue and Ari is still 
assembling the packages. They did a fantastic job. I want to give them a special thanks. They worked very hard the last couple of days, really pulling all this together, and they're great to work with. Um, on our care team, we have Andrew Ginokakis, who's at Harbor today. He's the only one of our team that didn't make it today. He's holding down the fort there. We have Kathy Mao as our pediatric representative from Harbor. We have Dr. Jeff Guterman, who will also be joining us in a couple of minutes. Um, he represents DHS administration and research. And we have Mark Richmond from all of you who will be joining us this afternoon. We have Uzma Hader from Humphrey. Uh, Vahid Mahabadi from all of you. Andy Lee from USC. And Monica Sony is our physician lead for expected practices. And our team works together. Um, we have a couple more, sorry. We have our dream team. This is what we teamed our diabetes specialists. And um, it's a lot harder trying to tackle diabetes care in Los Angeles County than it is, is beating Angola in a basketball game, um, if you don't remember what I mean. So this consists of Mayor Davidson, Ann Peters, and L.A. Ip. So this team works together. We talk to each other every two weeks on the phone. We work really hard. We have a lot of uh, interesting discussions and a little bit of um, controversy, but we come together in the end. Um, speakers, please stick to your time limits where you'll get a five-minute warning. Um, and Maria will hold up the signs. Please be uh, strict. We have a tight uh, schedule today. Um, all the lectures in the morning will be in Yosemite room here. In the afternoon, we have breakout sessions. They're in four, um, in four different rooms, and you have your schedule both on your name tag. You still have my name tag here somewhere. And um, on, um, there'll be, um, it's in your packet, and there should be information out there. You can talk to Sue if you have any questions where you go for the breakout sessions. We have basically four tracks. The first track is medication management and treatment of comorbidities. Track B is social action. Track C is case-based learning. And track D is medical home management. But you're, 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 you're not necessarily going to be assigned to a certain track. You're going to be assigned to a session. So you may move in between the different rooms. Please be prompt and go into the next session. Again, we want to start on time. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, everybody is assigned a breakout session. Again, it should be where you go on your name tag. Um, we have a list also in the back that Sue can help you with. Um, the sessions are designed to be interactive. We want to have some dialogue going on your name tag, and then we have a list in the back there which, uh, which breakout session is which. Try to stick to your session you're, you're assigned to. If for some reason you don't like your session, which you can't imagine, um, you can move to this room here. So this room has a lot of extra space in it because this is the biggest room. The other rooms, Joshua Tree, Mojave, Catalina, and Cabrillo, are pretty full. So um, probably you won't be able to move to one of those sessions, but you can try if you want. Um, but I think you'll like your sessions that you're assigned to. And they, we gave everybody their first or second choice. This is a map here. And you can see, um, not that clear, but you can see the Semini rooms over here. We have Cabrillo and Catalina over there. Mojave's next to it. And Joshua Tree's on the other side. The courtyard's out that way. So Joshua Tree's over there. The other rooms are over there. Um, Lunch, we are tentatively planning to be outside if it stops raining. And we're going to make a decision about 11, 11.30. So I'll let everybody know whether we're going to be outside for the food. And then you can network outside. We're not having anything planned during lunch about people who want to just social and interact. Um, you can go to sort of the track that you're most interested. I want to get the common people in each area. Um, but if you want, you can go somewhere else. Um, so track A, the medication management room, will be in the Yosemite. As you enter the room here, it will be on that side, the right side. The social action will be in the right side of the courtyard. As you go out, it will be on the right side over there. And if it rains, it will be in Joshua Tree. Case-based learning will be in Yosemite over on this side. And um, track D, the medical home management, will be in, in the courtyard on the left side over there. And if it rains, in the Catalina room. And we will put up signs as we decide whether they're going to be inside or outside. Um, you can join whichever ones you run. This is a little different from the breakout session. You can, the breakout session might be in one room, and you can do this lunch networking in, in a different room if you want. It's fairly informal. We're not going to uh, check you for make sure you're in the right session. Um, lunch, again, will either be, the food will be either in the foyer or outside. And we also have some break food um, this morning, and we'll have a break in the afternoon with another set of food. And I want to especially thank Sue Green for picking up the menu and the, the California endowment. I think we have some very uh, nutritious and fairly uh, good food today.
Um, at the end of the day, we're going to convene back in Yosemite here. And I'll try to give a wrap up from the leaders of the breakout sessions to try to give a summary of what we learned today. Please hand in your sheets on the three items that you learned and your interest in further discussion. And we will try to plan for having further discussion at our conference call, which is the first and third Thursday of each month from 4.30 to 6. So you can let us know if you want to participate in one of those calls. Please feel free to email me at uh, theaterfreeman at cdru.edu with comments and suggestions. And you can also put it on your, um, on your evaluations. Uh, the sessions in Yosemite will be recorded, they're being recorded now, and saved on YouTube. We'll send you a link, um, email a link for that. The sessions in the breakout rooms will probably, in the smaller rooms, will not be recorded. We are, uh, we have goodie bags today, um, and we are having um, the way that the actual DVDs will be handed out. Um, already we'll put them out, I think we'll put them over there in the corner over there. We have, I think, 100 of them today. Okay, and um, these are great uh, uh, DVDs. They're uh, donated by Kaiser. Um, they're good for your waiting rooms or you might want to watch them yourself. They're um, about um, two, two DVDs, each about two hours. And um, then they have some shorts at the end. They have Spanish subtitles, so they're really nice. We also, in your packet today, if you want to call them goodie bags, we have our two new protocols. We have oral medications and bedtime insulin, daytime orals. Um, the protocols in your package, the uh, Orals is finalized. The bedtime insulin is close to being finalized. So I did put draft on the top, but I think it's pretty, pretty set. This is what we're going to use. Um, and you'll hear more about them at both Dr. Davidson's talk and in the breakout sessions in the afternoon. OK, so I want to go over the survey that we conducted in July. It just gives you a little bit of idea of sort of why we decided to do Diabetes Day and um, some of our uh, things we learned from the survey participants. And I'll be really quick on this. The rest of the information is in, the, in your handouts for my slides, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you can look at it if you're interested. Um, we had 165 responders for the surveys. Um, the majority of them were primary care doctors. There was a good amount of nurse practitioners, physicians, assistants, residents, and fellows, and specialty doctors, pediatricians, other attendees responded. We basically um, discarded the specialty care, the specialist response and stuck with the primary care doctors for our survey. Um, the, um, they talked about their information. Again, a lot of nurse practitioners and primary care doctors. We have it on the left side, the community partners. On the right side, the DHS uh, providers. Um, good amount of residents, some physicians' assistants. Um, the patients, the percentage of people that can manage um, diabetes alone was fairly high. Uh, lower percentage of people in the community partner wanted some advice on consultation and some percentage wanted uh, referred to specialists. And on the right side, DHS is pretty similar. And some of the comments they did, again, I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, how can DHS uh, work group help you with your patients? Quick curbside consults offer more advice about diabetes management with limited resources. One person said, I can't add more at the current time. I don't uh, want an increased proportion of patients with diabetes. Um, how can the, the community partners be helped? Consult via internet, answer questions, phone consultation hours. I'm trying to work on that. It's not that easy to do, but uh, some of those are in our idea. Um, how can the work group help um, you answer your patients with diabetes, make ongoing communication easier, real-time consults for questions, educational workshops on management algorithms and prefer preferred formulary. So some of these we'll be definitely talking about today. Um, in terms of DHS, I try to have more consultations, nurse educators, clear algorithms, make sure new regimens are available. Dr. Peters is going to be talking this afternoon about some of the new, um, new drugs that are used for diabetes that many of them will be coming to your uh, formulary shortly. Um, some of the other people wanted uh, guidelines on how to manage patients, especially with insulin to use. Uh, Lances, Solastar pen, separate insulin, and so again, we have a big session this afternoon on how to use insulin, um, different lectures on diabetes management. How would you rate your knowledge and familiarity with the, the agents? Um, um, most people are familiar with the oral agents, very few are familiar with injectable agents like Bietta, basal insulin, pretty good to uh, mix uh, people, premixed insulin, less people, and pH regular, a fair amount of people, and basal bolus sort of a mixed amount of people. DHS, it's um, pretty similar here. So there are people, know, people know about the agents, um, but not everybody knows, and I don't think they know that well. 
Um, how would your interest be in co-managing with a specialist on some of these things? Um, there was a, 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 a modern amount of interest, especially with basal bolus, a little bit more. Um, with the inject uh, with Bieta, the inje non-insulin injectable agent, there was some interest. How would you rate um, in a, your interest in additional education on diabetes management? A lot of people said hi. A lot of people and community partners wanted um, wanted more education, and that's what we're trying to do today. And a fair amount in DHS also wanted more education. How would you like assistance? Um, manage your patient's insulin doses and community partners, 78%. Uh, and in DHS, 60%. So there is an interest in helping co-manage patients' insulin dosing. This is a pretty interesting question here. What are the barriers to patient sugar levels? Poor compliance is right up there. Uh, we'll have our, our keynote speaker today about how do you deal with patients that are having trouble with compliance. Um, that was one of the reasons why we picked Dr. Fisher. And we recognize that's a problem. Um, cultural barriers, um, limited education of patients, where those are definitely things we need to work on. What is your biggest partner barrier to getting uh, patients' blood sugars to target levels? Food deserts and lack of public health campaigns. Patients don't understand what eating healthy means. Lots of misbeliefs. We have a session this afternoon on how to um, on obesity management and dietary interventions. What is the biggest barrier to getting patients' blood sugars to target in DHS? Uh, we should have dedicated nurse diabetes educators who can bird dog patients when it comes to reviewing glucose logs and ensuring adherence to therapy. I like that one. Um, limited formulary medication and choices, and again, we want to expand the formulary. So I want to thank um, our endocrinology work group especially. Can the people in endocrinology work group stand up for a second? And here, Ahid. Okay, great. You guys work really hard. Okay. Um, Paul um, is our leader of our work group. He also was nice enough to give uh, Sue and Ari some time off for helping us, and we tried to limit it, but in the last days we got pretty swamped. Sonia is also helping us a lot. Um, we have some of the students that Drew helped us a little bit with the assembly yesterday. Um, we got funded from the UCLA uh, CTSI Catalyst Award and Kaiser Permanente um, Southern California Community Benefit. Jonathan Rodriguez and, uh, very, worked very hard for the CME. Catherine Cho worked very hard for the DHS nursing CEs. And Beth Rutansky for the social work CEs. Eric and um, Good and Sue Quo uh, at the California Dallas were wonderful. It's a great place here. The staff was really helpful. And it's just a delight to work with these people. Um, Mark Carmel is going to be doing some of the video conferencing and making the podcast. And Dr. Fisher was kind enough to come down to San Francisco to, uh, in the rain today uh, to be our keynote speaker.